Rare earth elements are critical for making everyday electronics, including your smartphone. But what are these elements and how do they get into your phone? Our editor at large, Corey Johnson, is back with more. Corey? Yeah, Emily, a company called American Elements sells nearly every element on the periodic table. Some of the biggest names in technology, American Elements CEO Mike Silver joins me right now. Michael, uh, good to see you. Um, this is something that we don't talk about much, the actual physical stuff that goes into all of the technological devices that we talk about in this show all the time. Um, how has that changed over the course of the last 10 years? Well, uh, people, if you went back 10 years ago, if you asked them if they were in high technology, they would say, oh yeah, I, I write computer code. Uh, not recognizing that the uh, valley south of you is not called Algorithm Valley, right? right? It's called Silicon Valley because it was really material science that began the computer uh, age. And now we're entering a period, you sort of reflected by guys like Elon Musk, who went from PayPal to building spaceships and electric cars, that people are finally actually inventing things. Uh, innovation is now the buzzword, and when you talk about inventing things in modern times, you're talking material science. I, I read an article, it's actually a great piece of, uh, based on a, a Yale study that talked about the, the sort of how rare some yeah, of I these know. rare metals are, but specifically talked about the, the notion of innovation. We've gone, the, the computers of 20 years ago might have used 14 elements, and today they're using four or five times that, mm -hmm. and that's why they're so much faster, that's why they're so much more capable. Correct. So if we had to go back to that old era, we'd go back to slower machines as well. That's correct. But where do these things come from, these newer elements that are being used in some of these high-tech products? Um, all over the world, but the fascinating thing is that just due to plate tectonics, they tend to be concentrated in special areas. You know, uh, your viewers will know the words rare earths, which is 14 elements, a 14 element series of elements on the periodic rare table. Earths, yeah, yeah. The rare earths. Uh, they essentially all come from China. Uh, China just won the uh, plate tectonic Russian roulette game, and so they have a, basically a monopoly on those materials. Now, uh, there's been, there was an important development with the WHO, I think just yesterday, yeah. where China, China had sort of changed the game a while back, where they said, we're, we're going to raise the prices of exporting these rare materials. So if you want to make something that requires them, you can make it in China for a lot less money. Correct. Or you can pay a lot more money for the export of goods. They're saying it's about the effect of mining on the economy. Is it really about that or is it because China's trying to capture this manufacturing? Well, if you accept the ruling of the WTO and the loss on appeal, that's what occurred yesterday, right. uh, it's all about trying to create a price differential to control those industries. Uh, and it's the way it felt. I mean, we were involved in China long before that began when there were really private plants. Now it's been consolidated into government entities. And it was quite clear that the pr process was to basically drive jobs. If you think about it... So it really you, wasn't about, the, you know, the WTO sort of proved that it right, right. really was about economics, if, not about uh, uh, ecology. Yeah, if you've got a super mining industry, you might create tens of thousands of jobs. But if you pass that advantage down the supply chain to automobiles and aerospace and electric cars, that's millions of jobs. So it's really a jobs-driven decision. All right, so let's that. talk about some of these, these things. Electric cars, for example. Yes. Uh, the electric car uses a lot more rare materials. There's a lot more different kinds of minerals. Specifically, what kind of things are in electric cars that are in other kinds of cars? Well, the most powerful magnet known to man is a neodymium magnet, one of the rare earths. So all electric cars have neodymium magnets in the right. electric motors. And the glass and the glass polish? Uh, the glass polish is cerium. Right. Uh, neodymium is in the glass to absorb the wavelength that creates yellow green to create a whiter light. Um, you've got lanthanum in the nickel metal hydride batteries, so it's ubiquitous. Rares are ubiquitous in electric cars. And uh, so, and then of course the cell phone also. Uh, we've we've had a lot of fun on Bloomberg West of prying apart the new iPhones when they come out and so on to sort of look at what's inside. But when we look inside of a cell phone, what, what kind of materials are being used that weren't being used before? Well, very much the same. Um, europium, for example, which is what creates the color screen, was actually the first rare earth to be used by man, Sarnoff to establish the first rare earth mine in California to get europium to create TV screens. So you got europium. You have neodymium, which runs the vibrator, it runs right. your speakers, you know, your speakers stick together. You know, that's a, that's a neodymium magnet. Uh, again, you have cerium in the glass, and then you have a bunch of other optical materials, terbium, uh, gadolinium, yttrium, so loads of, them, loads of them. Michael Silver, American Elements CEO, really appreciate your time. Thank you hey, very thanks, much. Thanks, Corey. Emily?